It's known as the cow foot. Uh, I bought it at the flea market. <clears throat> the fellow who was selling it was also selling a coffee table. And the legs of the coffee table were taxidermied, taxidermied shins of, cow, of, a, of cow with uh, the hair on and the hooves. And he had this ax. Uh, the different people at the flea market have different styles, and it's a lot of fun. And I talked to him. I said, uh, I teach wood carving, and I teach wood carving with hatchets. And uh, you and I both know I'm going to have to have this hatchet. Uh, this hatchet has been broken by being hammered against uh, wedges, splitting wood, and repaired with a soft iron rivet, which is the, the rivet of the woodshed of the of the Yankee farm, the same rivets that hold the uh, uh, sections on the mowing machine and so forth. And uh, the, the handle was just a stick of wood that was laying around, probably mahogany. And uh, I said, but you know, I'm going to tell this story a hundred times, so I have to pay you a dollar for it. And he said, well, I'll take the dollar. And so I bought this hatchet for a dollar. <clears throat> notice I start way up high, and notice I'm working uh, towards the back. I'm working away from the dorsal surface. You will never see the mark of my tool on the dorsal surface of this spoon. I'm always going to be away. That's known as the angle, and it takes a lot of students a long time to find it. Well, not a long time, but a while. And now, <clears throat> I call this dropping the handle. If you watch my right hand, you'll see my right hands going lower and lower and lower. And here on this side, watch my right hand, and you will see it going lower and lower and lower. And if I got this right, I will wind up with a very thin edge. Here is my spoon, and now I have defined the end of the bowl. We need to know where the end of the bowl is before we know where the handle begins. To begin the handle, I'm going to go, these are my workshop tools, and uh, to define the bowl, I'm going to want to carve in here and break it out. So I have chosen <clears throat> a thick axe. That is an axe with a a, a thick bevel, a, uh, an axe that has a thick bevel rather than a thin bevel. A thick axe turns, okay? A thick axe, we'll compare it, let's compare it with a thin axe, okay? You see the difference. A thick axe turns away. A thin axe goes straight. So by choosing a tool that wants to do what you want to do, I call this making a place. This glove is wearing out on me. I call this making a place. And sometimes you want to hit it 35 or 40 times. And the question is, how many times do you want to do this? The handle now is not too thin, is it? So I'm going to do this process as long as I dare until the handle gets thin enough to sort of scare me. 
So now you're beginning to see, John, why I chose this spoon. There's more to it. And I can teach more. I can show more by using it. It's also a lovely spoon. OK, here we are. One more time. Oh, one more time. Let me just trim a bit. I'll trim a bit later. I've finally gotten around to the back, so I can trim a bit up here. Okay. Careful. I didn't even check because I'm working evenly. The, the feel, this is, the, I mean, you can't operate this, this way until you've had some experience, but the feel is uh, very important. And, uh, you know, a, a beginner will check it more often. But I don't want to check. I want it to be perfect or I don't want it. So I'm going to run the process honestly and take what I get or lose it. And this is what I've gotten. And so far, so good. So I'm going to throw out another question. Yep. Mm -hmm. The concept of checking and perfect. Mm -hmm. You say you don't want to check it because you want it to be perfect. Exactly. So I would think just the opposite. Yeah. The more you check it, the more perfect you are. Yeah. You, you, the more you know you're moving towards perfect. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, I'm a Zen artist, and this is this is what we have. What what you've come, what your question you've asked, has elicited the meaning of Zen. So there it is. <laughs> uh, it's a very, very interesting spoon making. I think uh, uh, this spoon is for you, the user, but it is not for you. It is the gift of nature. And if you can make your peace with it, make a relationship with it, you have a <clears throat> good marriage. You have, you have a relationship that is valuable and it will be good for your soul as well as your soup. <laughs> and the minute you start talking about this stuff, it goes downhill. But it was a very good question. And when you're talking about this stuff before you know you're talking about this stuff, then, then you're getting it. OK, so it only needs to be refined here. And we can do that with ax or knife. The process we're involved here, of course, is splitting is uh, very effective. Bang, uh, one hit, you've got the spoon, two hits. Chopping uh, is less effective, but far more effective than uh, carving. And uh, so we're working from the, well, you, you can hear me what I'm saying. So, so let's try this knife. These, <clears throat> this is a, uh, this knife has a, a, a story. This is an, I made this, but it's a, uh, Indian concept. <clears throat> Someday I'll tell the story of this knife. Uh, it will take a while, but it will make for a very, uh, uh, a very good presentation. This I might have done before I started the handle. The more we can do here with a hatchet before we have to do this, the better. I'm not going to do a particularly thorough job here because I'm demonstrating and I want you to watch and not get bored. So just assume that I have smoothed this by this process. I'll get it as smooth as I have to before I do the next process. Be 
in a little more here. Notice I am uh, working, I call this working inside the embrace, is uh, I'm, uh, my hands are outside my work and I'm pulling towards my body. But what I'm doing, if you see the angle of the knife, I'm pulling the handle of the knife and allowing the blade of the knife to trail. So I'm pulling the handle right into my body, but I'm not, but the blade is not facing me. So I have power and safety and control to some degree. Okie dokie, let's stop that there. I would probably do more, but let's stop that like that. I'm, I'm, I'm just having this personal paranoia, paranoid feeling that my audience is getting bored. Oh, listen to that. You hear that sound? Yeah. Uh, I once demonstrated for a, a grade school class, and of course, when you demonstrate for a grade school class, the next day they all send you a thank you notes. And the entire class sent me drawings of frogs. Is what is what uh, is what excited them was that sound. This tool, which I call a plumper, is not a Western tool. It's not a Yankee tool. It's not a tool from my culture. This is a third world tool. The, all the wood carving done in the third world is done with what I call plumpers. And I'll show you some third world plumpers some other time. <clears throat> but all you need to do is, is uh, stick a nail into a club and hammer the end to a to a sharp and you can bang away in hollow wood. But, but this is the way I prefer to hollow wood. And this is just a time saver, you don't have to. Now you remember I said when I split this out years, ages ago, you're probably getting tired now, you remember that I said because I can't see this black uh, flaw uh, on the outside, therefore it must be, it must be, I must be able to dig it out. I must be able to carve be, below it. Uh, and get it out of the bowl. So let's just see if we can. I'm working hard at digging that thing out. It goes down there quite a ways. And maybe I won't make it all the way before I'm done demonstration wise. Hmm, getting down to a black spot. No fair digging it out. Got to keep the bowl even all the way through. It's getting pretty tight there. All right, let's call it good there. Well, not quite good. Okay. And the last carving is done with the bent knife. And I started before bent knives were available. 
the, the bent knife was unknown, <clears throat> it was known historically, but unknown as a uh, <clears throat> common tool in the workshop. They're, they were not available for sale. I had a few knife makers make them for me, but this one I made myself, and uh, I forged that out of a straight razor and uh, got lucky. You know, the way a woodcarver makes a knife is that you make 20 and throw away 19. And I didn't have to throw away that many, but this is the shape I found worked. And uh, I started out with this and uh, use it a lot still. And the interesting thing about it is it can be reversed. You see how I'm reversing it here. You can, you can reverse it. Uh, there's always one bad corner when you're, when you're shaving out a bowl. And uh, I wonder where Asa put my glove. Let me see. Not that one, this one. And uh, it's very handy sometimes to just work into the palm of your hand. So as you see, this has been repaired so many times. I can put it right here, see, and, and I can come at it like this. And I made this knife with no knowledge. And just last week, a friend of mine loaned me a contemporary woodworking magazine. And there was, because there was an article about a fellow who was making spoons, and son of a gun, his knife was almost exactly this shape. So somebody else, a manufacturer, I had no idea where he is or where to buy him, but a manufacturer somewhere, I don't think he, this fellow didn't make his tools, uh, discovered the same thing I did. That this is a very nice shape for a spoon maker's bent knife. So if you want to make yourself one or find one in the catalog, that's essentially what you're looking for. I was interviewed one time in about 1974, and uh, the fellow interviewing me described this blade in his, uh, in his uh, finished piece as a breaking wave. I suppose you got it. I suppose it's, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. So, so this is now ready to be dried by what the term I use is fired, which I'll get into someday, but not today. And until then, it sits underground, and we hope underwater, and we hope the next, the next processes will take that knot out which of course it will because they don't see it here. So there's a good chance. <laughs>